everybody, Arnaldo here, and the title is pretty obvious. What is it that I do to help my corals grow pretty well, and what are the tips that I would pass off to somebody else? That is my 75-gallon reef. It's my first saltwater tank. Got another one there, another one there, another one in the room, and this, of course, is my first love, and these corals are growing like crazy. You know, take this frog spawn that I bought as an itty-bitty head not even five, six months ago, and it's already got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, another skeleton growing out of it. The recordias have doubled in size. Zoas are growing like crazy. Ignore the hair algae right over here. We're going to skip right past over there. Uh, but it's just growing and growing and doing so well. Ironically enough, the GSP is not growing as fast as you would think it does. But it's also has to do because it's in a high flow area. And that's okay. That's how I'd like it to stay. So here are some of the products and the tips that I've used that will hopefully help you. Well, let's begin. <music> Tip number one, just go ahead and spend the money on an Apex and a Trident. Look, I, I tried so hard for the longest time saying, I don't need it, I don't need it, I don't need it. And I got tired of sitting here spending a good 15, 20 minutes every day to test my water because I was trying to figure out if I needed to dose or not. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to try the Trident out. And I fell in love and I'm so glad I did it. I like it so much that every one of my salt waters, no matter how big or small, has the Apex and the Trident. Just being able to test it magnesium, calcium, and alkalinity is a huge godsend. Um, and it did save my tank. I noticed, oh crap, I'm really low on alkalinity. Just recently, I've only had a dose alkalinity. But just recently, all of a sudden, it kept saying, calcium out of range, calcium out of range. I look at the chart and it just tanked down. And one of my corals was looking really uh, bleak. And then when I look into it more, I'm like, oh, there's no calcium. So I started dosing and everything else. And needless to say, it saved my tank. Now, could I have done this without a trident? Absolutely. I could have sat there and tested it manually. But when I, you know, or if you work several, several, more than 12 hours a day, you don't want to come home and sit there and test everything. This lets me do less maintenance and worrying and more of enjoying my hard work. So definitely that. Next, it's proper lighting. Now this may sound like a duh, but I don't think it's obvious enough for most people about what I mean by proper lighting. Now, ironically enough, I only have two Hydra 32s, when in reality a tank like this should have three. But why? Because of tip number three, that's right, yes. Tip number three that goes along with tip number two, and that is plan your lightscape. Now, people talk about planning your aquascape, but lightscape is really important. And this is me speaking as a lighting designer for events. You want to make sure that lighting serves a purpose. And yes, we want to hit your tank with as much as possible, but I wanted some dark areas because they're, they're darker, right? I'm talking less than 200 par right around here. So then I can put some of my corals that don't want that high light in here. Um, I do want some of these dark areas here. That, I mean, you can't see because the lights are off right now, but I want to grow my mushrooms in this area. So I plan my rockscape and the lights and how it was going to go. What I found out is I wanted a little bit more of that actinic range. I wanted some better coverage and boom, the reef brights were a godsend. So now the reef brights attached to my Hydra 32s. It looks beautiful. Also, one really important tip is find a good lighting program, especially using the AIs. You can load multiple lighting programs. I went with the David Zaxby type program where it ramps the lights up and down. From what I understand, David Zaxby's thinking is by ramping the lights up and down, it boosts the photosynthesis process and helps the coral grow faster. I've had great success with this program, plus it adds a little bit of variety, so when I look at my tank, the coloration's a little bit different each time, it just works really well. So again, tip number two is proper lighting. I'm a huge fan of the AI Hydras. There's some other great ones out there, but the Hydras, in my opinion, are the biggest bang for the buck. And tip number three that goes along with that is plan your lightscape along with your aquascape. Now, that goes to tip number four, which is kind of part of those two, and that is rent a par meter. Now, whether you get one from BRS or look for any local reef group. So I joined our local reef group, Reef Visions, and one of the member benefits is they have a par meter. That alone paid for the membership twice or thrice over. So I'm so glad I joined. It's just a great group of people, super awesome. But the fact that there's a par meter with it, even if we didn't have any meetings, even if I got nothing out of that group, just the fact that there's a par meter, awesome. So look that up. If not, you know, the people at Bulk Reef will get you taken care of. Tip number five is obviously dosing. 
and don't dose cheap crap. I'm a huge Seachem fan, so that's what I use. That leads us on to our next tip, and that is dosing amino acids. Now, I've just recently started, but I, I'm using the Amino Feast Plus because it's the best bank for the buck. You're talking less than 100 bucks. We'll take care of this entire tank for a year. With that and the Kamalar Doser, plug and play. I don't have to worry about any of that, and it's wonderful. Especially the corals that I'm fragging, they grow back fast. They're already opening up. It's wonderful. So definitely don't be afraid of amino acids. Amino acids are an important part of their nutritional balance, which leads us to the following tip, the proper food. Now, again, common sense tips, but this is what I use. It works for me. Hopefully it'll work for you. First, I like to switch everything up. I don't like doing the same thing every single time. So I feed my corals or something aimed at the corals every other day or every three days. Now that will usually be Dr. G's LPS or SPS. And from what I'm being told, SPS is the finer version of LPS. So for some of the trickier corals or clams or even your mandarins, because my mandarins love SPS, they'll get the same nutrition, but SPS, they'll get it a lot better. I also use Dr. G's Oyster Magnifique. Again, between just alternating in these foods, I'll do one one day, skip a couple days, and the next one, skip a couple days, then the next one, and I feed at night, with the exception of Oyster Magnifique because my anemones absolutely love it. But during the night, that's what I feed. The polyps are already extended out. Some of my corals, like my trachea, uh, my galaxin, just have those big, long, sweeper tentacles. They're wanting food, and this helps keep them full. Now, as far as my daytime food, I use my Julian's thing. And you know, I thought everybody knew what this is, but apparently a lot of people don't. It's this cool little syringe, and you just feed your coral that way. How awesome is that? But what actual food do I use in my Julian's thing? I've tried it all. I tried Reefroids, and what I got was a crap load of algae. I tried Benepets, and it looks like cement. It got a pretty decent, actually both of them got a you know, pretty decent polyp response. I even did a video on the Reefroids as well, but it was polluting my tank too much. And Benepets, eh. So then I started trying out the Willow's Reef, and I am a huge fan now of Coral Feast. It's insane. I mean, not only do I get a great polyp reaction, not only do my mandarins eat it, but just in general, it doesn't pollute my tank. Now, I don't just do it in straight water. I actually grab some of my phytoplankton, mix it with the phytoplankton, and broadcast feed each one. Now, remember, when you broadcast feed, turn off your pumps, everything. You want that water as still as possible. And if you have a little jerk hole, Midas Blenny that wants to eat all your food, make sure they eat. he eats first. Next tip, consistency is key. Now, we've all heard, don't go chasing numbers. I cannot get the pH in this tank to go above eight at all. Sometimes it dips down to 7.7. .7. It's been like that since day one. And everything that I'm hearing tells me they shouldn't be growing, but they are. Would they grow faster with a proper pH? Possibly. But if I sit here and try to get this pH up and then it goes down and it goes up again and down, that's gonna cause a bigger problem. So. If you can't reach those numbers, don't go chasing them, stability or, everything else, or anything else, unless it's intense. I know there's a little bit of a controversy and people wanting to give it different inputs, but I'm telling you, that part's working well for me. Yes, I'm trying different things to slowly get that pH up, but this is Florida. I'm not opening up any windows because it's too hot outside. So stick with those numbers that you can. Don't go chasing them, except for your alkalinity and calcium. That you need to be on a pretty good range for. And the last one is watch your tank. I mean, yes, we're working so hard on it. You want to sit there and look at it and make sure it's pretty, but I mean, really watch it. And that's why I got my little flipper magnifying glass. Just look at your coral. Is anything dying off? Is something not right? Did something get moved around? Did you put a decorator crab in there or an urchin? But just watch everything. And if you see that something's off in your tank, don't freak out. Don't start taking out coral, making them panic but just really, really watch. Which leads me to just the last closing thing. Get your ICP test. I'll later do a video as to why it's the most important thing in the world and why I will save your tank on more than one occasion before you even know it. But get your ICP test. Mine told me that I'm really low on iodine. So I take some iodine. I do about four drops every single week. Now every tank is different. So you gotta figure out what your ICP test tell you, but get your ICP test. And hopefully, 
your tank will have as good of experience as mine has had so far and I know that I can do better so I'm looking to see or I'm looking forward to seeing what I can do to make these guys grow even faster. So hey, thank you so much. If you have any questions, comments, etc., leave them down below. Have a great night and God bless.